Welcome to Tabletop Island, I'm Renato, your host, and today we're going to be talking about the top five horror board games. This is going to be my list for 2020, and man, these lists are going to be a lot different than before. Number five being Hako Ono. Yes, Hako Ono appears on the list again. I've gotten a chance to play it a few times, and man, am I a pretty big fan of it. I was quite surprised. So your goal is to defeat Hako Ono. Someone's playing Hako Ono, and they get to move around secretly and this game is super super crazy because just when you think that you have a way to kind of get around things if you reveal a tile that shows Hako Ono you get turned and that sucks for your opponents because or your team I should say because they lose you and then you become kind of the other side of the of the game where you're trying to defeat the opposing team so your goal is to eliminate Hako Ono. I have a review on it if you want more details on it. It's a good one. It's a lot of fun and I do recommend it. It's definitely a lot of fun and it's really on the cheaper side. And I feel like a lot of people don't talk about it. It's not the most overly exciting game. It doesn't have the most overly exciting components, but the game plays really fun and quick. So I recommend checking that one out. Jumping into number four, we have Betrayal House on the Hill. Yes, that had to make an appearance again because that game is awesome. I still very much enjoy it and it's still probably one of the more played, I guess, longer games that I own. And it's there for a reason. The game is a classic. They even have a new version that's a Scooby-Doo theme if you're interested in that. I'm pretty interested in taking a look at that, maybe even picking that up too because I like the game so much and I do enjoy Scooby-Doo. Yeah. And if you're not familiar with the game, you are basically going through the house, exploring to get different items, and at some point in the game when a condition's met with the dice, a haunt happens. And someone, whoever the haunt happens on whoever's turn, is the one who's haunted, and either becomes possessed, becomes invisible, turns into a monster. It's outrageous, there's a bunch of different scenarios, and man is it hard and almost impossible to be the villain, but that is perfectly fine because the chase and the excitement is so much worth it and the experience is immensely exciting. I, I don't know how much more to describe it. If you're interested, I'd recommend checking out my review. I'll leave a link in the description where you can take a look at that. It's one of my more prouder reviews too, so definitely be on the lookout on that one. But that's number four, Betrayal House on the Hill. Three is actually a newer one in my collection, The Shiny. That is a Prospero Hall game, and man did it live up to its expectation. The theme is grasped extremely well, and there, that's really just all I have to say about it. It grasped the uh, kind of detailing from the movie, and it really feels extremely thematic. It's not the most scary game in the world, but it is such a ridiculous game. At some point, some um, entity can um, possess someone or um, e or obviously they're shining, or even crazier, someone is a hidden traitor, which can or cannot be. So that's where you're like super paranoid the whole time is, I don't wanna be too close to this person because they might be trying to kill me and they might be trying to utilize um, kind of the craziness happening in the game as the reasoning why they're attacking me and not really their hidden objective to eliminate me. But that game, The Shining, highly recommend that. Um, you can find that, I believe that's a Target exclusive, so definitely be on the lookout for that one. Number three, The Shining. And number two is Tear Below. This is by Renegade Games, and honestly, I love this game. It's like Tremors the board game. And it it's the only, yeah, I wanna say it's the only pick up and deliver game I've actually enjoyed. And I've played at least 12 to 13 different ones, even some very popular ones I don't feel like naming. But yeah, they all sucked. I'm sorry. But this game was awesome. Super thematic and super fun. I just take a look into it. I don't have a review on it yet, but it will come soon. Tear Below by Renegade Games. And finally, number one. This one seems pretty obvious if you know uh, a lot of the horror games out there, but that's going to be Horrified. Another game by Prospero Hall. Killing the game still. Holy crap, this game is awesome. Super thematic. The kind of components just look absolutely gorgeous. The design on the game is just 
unmatchable. It, it's just, it's such a great game, a great cooperative game, and I'm not a big fan of too many cooperative games, but this one's high on the list for that very reason. Horrified, there's not much to say about it. If you want more information, I'll have a link in the description where you can take a look at my review. Um, but yeah, that game is awesome, highly recommend it. Number one, horrified, and that's honestly all I have for you guys today. As I've mentioned before, every day for this entire month I'll be releasing a new video. Whether it's a bonus review, a how-to, or maybe even just a ghost story. I'll be keeping the theme and we'll be having a whole lot of fun. I hope you guys are enjoying it so far. Now, if you are interested in notifications, there's a bell up there somewhere. Please like, comment, subscribe, I appreciate any feedback. I'm trying to make these videos more and more outrageous. And with your guys' help, I have been doing so. As for the regular schedule, we have Monday, regular board game reviews, Wednesday, weekly update slash talks, and then on Friday is my vintage board game reviews. That is all I have for you guys today. I'll see you guys next time.